We are pleasure to be joined by Massachusetts native and uh, car chief for the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Team Penske. We are joined by Tommy Ellis. Tommy, welcome to the show. How are you tonight? Good, Neil. Thanks for uh, having me on this wonderful Wednesday evening here. Absolute pleasure to have you, sir. And uh, I know you're down in North Carolina getting ready for the race at COTA this week. But let's jump into things. And, of course, the first question I always like to ask our guests here is, how did you catch the racing bug? Man, it uh, kind of just happened naturally. Uh, third generation racer out of the Ellis family. Um, grew up uh, working in my dad's garage. Uh, you know, they have a normal routine Mondays and Thursdays and Saturday mornings. And uh, that was kind of what I did. I went out there and hung out in the garage with the guys and passed some wrenches, learned my learned my uh, fractions on the on the wrench set and kind of helped out wherever I could. And um, at a younger age, I started racing uh, mini cups. And from then I was hooked and kind of thought that's what I needed to do the rest of my career. So you mentioned your father, who, of course, your father, Lenny, is the race director at Seekonk. Talk to us about some lessons that Len has taught you over the years in the racing world. Oh, man, lots of them. Uh, the main one is, uh, you know, garage, and, uh, the races are won in the garage. Um, you know, that's, that's true all the way up through the Cup Series. You know, everything you have uh, for preparation just makes you better on race day. And, you know, that could be at Seekonk Speedway or, you know, your your Xfinity, your Cup Series, whatever. You know, um, I mean, we practice making changes at the shop just to be faster at the racetrack. And the same can be for, you know, your Saturday night short track racers, just, you know, being prepared at the shop, making sure your stuff's right, your stagger's right, your air pressure, your little things, you know, it's not not everybody kind of comes up and asks you hey how do i go faster and 99 percent of it is just your everyday routine maintenance on your car making sure everything's right crossing your t's dotting your eyes that type of stuff so you mentioned seacon uh, speedway and uh, a place that obviously you grew up what does that track mean to you what does seacon speedway mean to you tommy Man, that's home. Uh, even when I come up and race loud and I still try getting down there on Saturday night, as long as the weather looks good. Um, luckily, our garage closes a pretty decent time on Saturdays now in the Cup Series, and uh, I don't mind taking the two-hour drive, stealing a rental car, and coming down there and watching a Saturday night. Um, every time I come home, uh, I pass it. I pass it on the way to see my house, so I kind of dip on in sometimes. I'll talk David and meet in there and open up the gate and taking a lap around the track, just seeing what's different. You know, they've done a lot of upkeep over the over the past few years, with, you know, painting and, and, you know, repaving. And it's just kind of cool that you don't see it every week. So when you do come home and you get to see it, you know, it just kind of keeps you in the loop of what's going on there. And, I mean, I, I love it. You know, I, I watch a lot more than I think people know. I follow it a lot on uh, social media. I look at pictures. Um, Sometimes I'll call my friends and be like, hey, your car looks a little rolled over. You know, you might want to think about doing some of this. Like, I try paying attention, watching Friday night racing and Saturday night. You know, obviously it's busy, but I do like to stay involved and, and, you know, keep in the loop of my my home track. So So talking about, you know, your job now down there with Penske and, how important is the line of communications? Because it's it's not like local racing where it's just you and your dad racing a car or maybe one other guy. you got a whole team you have to organize. And how important is communication to all of that? So we do a lot on the computer in checklists and, and setup lists. And, you know, so you're building these cars month in advance. And by the time it gets to us, the team, the actual guys that go on the road, my guys, um, it's pretty much done and set up. And um, from there, it's like my responsibility to kind of walk around it, um, make sure everything in there is the right. You know, these these cars are designed um, 
where everything is a component, right? So you're not really checking to make sure that's a 10 and 3 quarter inch upray frame, right? Like you have what NASCAR allows you to have. But there's still different block shims and um, A-frame positions and stuff like that. And I have a checklist that I walk around every week and kind of check the suspension. And then um, I have an aero checklist. And, you know, so, like, we'll get all that our first day. And then from there we'll do what we call a Hawkeye. And that's NASCAR's version of tech. So our shop has a Hawkeye. We'll roll it on in there. And all these lasers come down and check to see where the body is. Now, we're allowed a hundred thousandths on the body. So it can be a hundred thousandths up or a hundred thousandths down, but that's our box. And the same for the underbody is a hundred thousandths box. So really our tolerances are pretty tight and we make sure that we can pass tech. And that's our main goal the first day. And then the second day is kind of more of a final scale fluff and buff we check all of our cambers our weights get shocks and springs on the car and uh send it through again and uh again just double check the body the floor um they have a deal that while you're in the hawkeye you put these wheel plates on and it makes sure that you're not over any nascar's tolerance as far as tread width and camber and wheel offsets and different things like that so everything's done in this one machine and it pretty much scans it and that lets you know if you're going to pass or not pass on race day. So let's take a quick step back for the listeners who are kind of learning, might not know too much about the sport, and maybe even your job, okay. obviously, as the car chief. Talk to us, take us through a week at, you know, at the shop for you, obviously coming back from a race weekend where you were in Bristol this past week and getting set for Coda. What's, uh, what's a Monday through Friday look like? So my job and the team's guys... Uh, when we get back from the race, we don't live in the past. We don't worry about anything that happened in Bristol other than the stuff we used, right? Like we restock the toolboxes and, and chemicals and get stuff off the trailer and, you know, clean up the stuff that we use. But what happened in the past is done. So, like, when we when we walk, walk out of Bristol, we're done with that car, and that car circulates back about six weeks is what it takes to come back to us. Um, so we already start focusing on the next week. So this week it was Coda, a little bit different road course. Um, you know, you got a few different things to worry about, but our job is mainly to check the car. Uh, what we do a call the nut and bolt to a certain extent. Um, but these new cars are kind of tough. Like you kind of build them and like, there's not a whole lot of taking them apart to check things. So you got to really trust the guys in the shop that they did their job. Um, but at the end of the day, it's also on you. So it's your comfort level of how much do you trust where the car is at. Um, for me, I have my several checklists and, you know, I got paper versions, computer versions, and then, you know, you kind of get a different, um, feel on what the event is. You know, it's a road course. All right. We need to worry about these different things. Brake cooling is a big, big factor. Um, you know, break. So you really kind of focus in on a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, the aero list is more along the lines of just, you know, making sure it's going to pass NASCAR's tolerances. And, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a right and a left track, you know, so it's a little bit different than your normal stuff. You had... Um, you had... My mic is not on, I don't think. Is my mic on? I think it is. I, I can hear you. Again. Can there we go. Me? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Tommy. I thought I can't hear it through my headset. Uh, when you, you had a lot of experience going through the trucks and Xfinity before Cup, uh, tell us how those experiences and what you've learned throughout your years to get you where do you are, to where you are now. Man, I, I love truck series. And, and pretty much anybody that knows me will tell you that I love the truck series. That's where I come up. I, I, uh, raced most of my career in the truck series. Um, it's a different breed, you know. They everybody kind of looks at that and like, oh man, they run 28 races. You know, it's a lot less than the Cup Series. Um, they run on Friday nights or Wednesdays. They got it pretty easy. That is 100% false. Um, those guys work probably harder than most of us Cup guys as far as time at the shop. Um, you know, you run a Friday night, you come back to the shop on a Saturday or Sunday, and you're working. 
Um, so, yeah, like the Cup Series, we're gone a lot on the weekends, but our vehicles are given to us in a really good condition. Where the truck guys, you bring all your guys with you. You have maybe one or two that stay back, but you're really working to build that car compared to where I get it in a lot more complete stage now. So talk to us a little bit about your relationship on, on a race weekend with your driver, who, of course, uh, is a two-time champion, Joey Logano, from New England as well. Talk to us a little bit about that relationship working with Joey uh, every week. He's one of the best. Um, you know, I wish everybody could meet Joey and know Joey like his team does. You know, as far as, like, going out to dinner with us, wanting to hang out with us, be involved in our lives, know what's going on, he's he's one of the nicest humans out there. Now, I also love the fact that when he puts on the, fel- the helmet, he's driving 100% for his team. You know, every decision he makes on the racetrack, is for the better of his team. So he may be a little aggressive to some people's likings, um, but at the end of the day, we try the hardest for him, and he's trying the hardest for us. So you know when he puts that helmet on, you know, he's going out there to race for his 22 crew, and he and he truly does believe that. You know, he's got a sticker on his car. He's the only one at Team Penske that on the left rear quarter panel on the taillight, it says 22 crew. And he truly believes that we are a team, that we do things together, and we're a crew, you know. So that's on and off the racetrack. Um, You know, it's funny to go over his house and see his kids, you know, hanging off his, you know, shoulders and, you know, eating spaghetti. And, you know, they're just a normal family. And I wish everybody could see that side of him. But I also like the fact that he's, pretty aggressive on the racetrack which may or may not be a fan favorite at all times talk to us a little bit about your race weekend and what you do day in and day out saturday whether it be starting friday saturday depending on how many how many days in the weekend it is for on track activity our our weekend since covid uh has really changed you know so now we just have uh usually a tech day sometimes a tech and practice and qualify day, but everything we do is impounded unless NASCAR gives us an extended amount of time. So when we come off the hauler, we really have to be ready to hit the racetrack. So we'll go through a tech process, which is on a tech ride height strut um, that NASCAR is deemed. So it's three and a half inches off the ground and all the cars go through there on these struts. And we go through a check, and then when we're good and we pass, we'll go back to our stall. They'll do a thing called de-blocking, and we'll put shocks and springs on that NASCAR has also inspected. And then that's pretty much it. We sit there. Um, when an official comes on up, we'll roll to the grid. We'll do our 15, 20 minutes of practice. We're allowed X amount of adjustments, which is really – um, rounds on your coilovers, just like your late models and pro stocks would have. Um, sway bar adjustments, which is a little bit different than like your normal late model or pro stock at Seacong Speedway. And then um, we're also allowed shock clicks. So we have four-way adjustable shocks. And those are really our adjustments that we can do and tune in on the car. So we'll change heights, um, wedge, bar blade, and that's, that's pretty much what we're locked into. And then uh, we'll line them up, qualify, and then uh, it's, they're impounded again. So race day mornings, pretty much uh, come on in, heat them up, because we have to heat our oil to uh, to fire these things. It's, it's a little different. They, uh, the blocks and all the engines like to get heat in them. Um, so we'll heat them up, uh, run them for a little while, pit crew come in, jack it up, make sure that it looks good for what they're willing to see on on the pit stop and line them up and race so i'll um i'll throw just one opinion on something you said and then i have a question for you but uh you were talking right. about you were talking about how joey is a team player in um in how he does everything for his team i just want to add in um and i never saw this in him before is just how tough he is he is tough you know just tenacious really 
Um, and that, that's just my opinion. So, I mean, I mean, it shows in the whole team effort. The, um, the question I got for you is, with the new Ford car, uh, how do you guys feel about that? Like, how do you, how do you think it's going to come in toward the end of the year? And, I mean, I know you guys are just feeling it out, but it looks pretty racy to us. I'm kind of hoping it shows really good coming up. Absolutely. Um, and I just want to start off with how cool I think it looks, you know. like, And that's in all the series. Like, like the first time I actually got to see it was one of those um, G, G, uh, T3, I don't really know, road racing, but it was a, it was a 24-hour car. And it just looks incredible. And then I got all of them. I, we got ours, and, you know, they have a um, bunch of different stuff with this body on it. And all of the cars just look super cool. Um, but as far as performance, yeah, I mean, I, I think we definitely took a step in the right direction. Um, and as with anything new, I mean, you you know, there, there's learning curves. Um, everything kind of reacts a little bit different, especially when you're, tolerances are so tight so you know right now i feel like you know i feel like it's a definitely a positive step i mean we've been to super speedways been fast we were at the clash we were fast um you know looking forward to our first road course this weekend to see what it can do but um definitely i would expect you know every week getting stronger and stronger with just knowing what the car needs compared to what the driver's feel is Tommy, how much does a rain delay set back a race team, or is there no set setback and it's just business as usual just a day later? So it depends if we bring people. Um, you know, Daytona, for example, was raced on Monday, which would normally not be an issue, but as far as going up to California and we had extra people, or, uh, sorry, coming back from California, and, well, that one was raced, would have been a rain delay. That would have been really bad. Um, when we have our extra guy that's away from the shop, it's a little bit tougher, you know. Um, anything West Coast is really tough. But as far as, like, a, a normal race weekend, it's not as much of a hassle as it is just to get it all in. You know, you're out of your routine. Um, sometimes you think you're running at night. Next thing you're running during the day. Um, you've practiced at a different hour than you were expecting. Um, even even hotel-wise, right, like your pit crew gets flown down, you, you rain out, you weren't planning on those guys staying. So now, you know, finding, you know, 45 rooms for different, you know, organization. Every organization is looking to put those people in a hotel that wasn't staying that night. It gets a little bit tougher, and you start traveling, you know, hour and a half to the track to get you know different accommodations um you know i know this is going to sound crazy but your your um health you know your, your the amount of sleep you get uh the food you're able to intake you know our pit crew guys are are incredible athletes and you know you get them out of a routine or or you know a little bit lower on their normal energy level that they have and it, and it affects those guys too so I would say that more affects anything. Um, and then delays during the day are just long. You know, like if you were planning on racing at 3.30 in the afternoon and next thing you know it's 10 o'clock at night, you've had a long day of just doing nothing, not being in emotion. And it's actually tougher on you at that point in time to get back going, you know. So I'm sure there's a lot of the kids who – Watch you on, you know, where your journey is led, who race at Seekonk. Uh, final question I have for you tonight for the kids who might be listening down at Seekonk. What do you want to say to them to continue to inspire them and keep their dream alive? Man, I, I was told at a young age that, you know, you can't, you can't do racing for a career. You're going to have to find something else that you want to do. And I feel like I've proved everybody wrong on that. Um, and it's not for everybody. Um, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there. And, um, you know, you got to be passionate, but you also have to be willing to put in the work. Um, some of these drivers that I've seen come along the way have amazing talent, but if they're not w willing to put in the extra work, 
whether it's behind the simulator, uh, learning pit road, studying SMT, um, you know, and that's at our cup level. But it's still, there's a lot of tools out there. And if you're not, if you think you're just going to get in on the weekends and drive, you're not putting in enough effort. And that's every week our cup drivers are in here two days a week studying, working out, doing different things, and that's all to help them on the weekend. And, you know, I think if you put in the effort, you definitely have a chance to make it. But you have to be willing to put in all the hard work. Absolutely. Been joined here by car chief for the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford in the NASCAR Cup Series for Team Penske, Tommy Ellis, joining us. And, uh, Tommy, absolute pleasure to have you. I can tell you I will see you next month down at Talladega. Uh, go have fun out there and go uh, go get yourself some momentum, get yourself a win leading uh, in Dakota this weekend. All right, appreciate it. Thank you, guys.